Welcome to a virtual toast to the Catholic Charities Gala. I'm Ken Smith with Double Uriel and Fox 50. We so appreciate you tuning in tonight. I'm here with the uh, gala chairperson, uh, Ellen Crowley. Good evening, Ellen. Good evening, Ken. Listen, we've got such a great and engaging program for you tonight. Not only do we have great raffle prizes, we have some great entertainment and some special guests, including Duke University football coach David Cutcliffe. You know, over the last year and a half, it's been such a difficult time time for so many of us because of the pandemic and tonight many of us are still going through a few challenges but tonight we are here to celebrate hope a hope for better today hope for a better tomorrow and of course hope for the continued success of Catholic Charities so Ellen tell our folks how they can contribute to that success so one way to participate this evening is to purchase a raffle ticket we have three great prizes the first prize is a choice between a tour of Alaska or a week-long stay at the exclusive Kiowa Island Resort. The second prize is a wine cellar dinner at the Angus Barn for 12 people, five courses. And the third prize is a Taste of the Triangle, a gift basket of over $1,000 worth of gift certificates to local restaurants. Tickets are $50 a piece, three for 100 and six for $200. Didn't I tell you we had some great raffle prizes? So you need to get in on that, right? We've got our eyes on that for sure, absolutely. You know, we couldn't put on this wonderful event without our great and dedicated sponsors. And tonight we want to take an opportunity to thank our gold sponsors, starting with Affordable Communities Group. Thank you to Colleen and Jim Baker. We also want to say thank you to Marianne and Mark Insweiler. Maria and Bob Luddy, thank you for your support. Another gold sponsor, Pointer Spruill, Attorneys at Law. And Terry Shackleton. And we also want to welcome to our gold sponsorship, our rounding out the gold sponsors tonight, Karen and Chuck Svoboda, Ellen. Ken, it's so nice to be with you again. It's hard to believe it's been 18 months since we celebrated the incredible work of Catholic Charities at the Marriott Crabtree Ballroom. With a lot of patience and technology, here we are virtually. Thank you for, to all of you who are joining us tonight. We look forward to being in person next year. Let's get the evening started. It's with great pleasure that I introduce the Bishop of Raleigh, the Most Reverend Luis Rafael Zarama. My brothers and sisters, welcome to this new way to celebrate the Catholic Charities Gala. Things have been changing since last year because of the COVID-19. We are not together in the same room, but we are together in a different way. And the reason why we are together virtually is because we know and we recognize the needs of the people, the needs of the poor. I am in a different place and I welcome you from the cathedral, the seat of the bishop, the place in which we celebrate the mystery of God's love. From here, I welcome all of you to celebrate this Catholic Charity Gala. And in the year of St. Joseph, I think it's a good year to know that the Lord is calling us to serve the ones who are in need. And I think St. Joseph is the saint of the unexpected. Everything happened in his life in the way that he never expected. And we are living in times like that, confronting realities that we never expect. But always is something that we can do, is to respond to the needs of the people. And that is 
what Catholic Charities always have been doing and is still doing, and we're looking to continue to doing that for their, our brothers and sisters who are in need. In the way that the Catholic Charities helps, it's amazing. The people who come find a place not only to respond to the physical needs, but they have a place where they can be listened and a place where they can feel important. And everything is so possible because of you, because of your generosity, because you open and you see the needs of the poor and you support the work of, of Catholic Charities. Be generous. Open your heart that in the way that we are together virtually, we can make virtually reality when we touch the hearts of the people who are in need. Hoping that next year we can be together and celebrate the gift of love, the gift of charity, and the gift of mercy. I'd like to thank Ken and Katie who are helping us together in this night to celebrate this gala. Thank you for your generosity and your support. And we ask the Lord to help us with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, during this year of St. Joseph, we remember all the people who are in need. In Joseph, Jesus saw the tender love of God in each of us through the support of Catholic Charities. Let us be reminded of that. And with the intercession of St. Joseph, let each person see the tender love of God in our work. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of our important work and for the blessings of the many generous people who help us to serve and bring light, love, and hope for the people who are in need. May God bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Zarama. As always, your words are so full of love and inspiration, and we are so grateful you could join us this evening from Holy Name of Jesus Cathedral. I am Katie Fithian, Director of Development for Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Raleigh, and I'm so excited to be joining you in this new and very different format for the Catholic Charities Gala. Ken, you know, what is so beautiful about this evening tonight is that it allows our entire diocese to share in the evening, to see and truly celebrate the great works of Catholic Charities. And just as Bishop Zarama shared, tonight brings us together, but in a very different way. So I would like to spend some time thanking our sponsors this evening because since its inception in 2011, the Catholic Charities Gala has raised over $1.2 million to help fund the agency's critical services. And this is, of course, thanks to our many, many donors. This past year, Catholic Charities impacted the lives of nearly 58,000 people in Central and Eastern North Carolina. And we accomplished this through our four core services of disaster services, food pantry services, immigration legal services, and family advancement services. Now you will hear more details about these programs throughout the night, but to give you an idea of how important your support is to our neighbors in need, all funds raised at this virtual Toast to the Gala will directly impact our client services. Contributions tonight will put nutritious food on a family's table. They will help the elderly obtain necessary prescription medications. Tonight's donations will assist in moving families out of homelessness and into safe and secure housing. And they will help to rebuild someone's home after it was destroyed by a devastating natural disaster. And Ken, these are just a few examples of how generosity will make an enormous impact in the lives of our brothers and sisters in need. Gratefully, we have already seen so much generosity tonight. But I would like to take a moment to thank this evening's many sponsors who you see scrolling behind me, as well as the hundreds of people throughout the diocese who have made donations, purchased raffle tickets, and sent your prayers of support. You have already made a huge difference 
but there is so much more work to be done. And we thank you for joining us on this journey to learn more. And as Bishop Zarama said, open your hearts and be generous tonight. And you know, Katie, uh, Catholic Charities, the success of our mission mm -hmm. really steeped in great leadership. And we're so grateful for our executive director, Lisa Perkins. I remember the first time I met her, uh, we were uh, had just gotten uh, c converted to Catholicism, mm -hmm. right. married my lovely wife, Amanda, and I got a call about uh, being part of the board of directors yeah. for Catholic Charities. And I met with Lisa and another board member, and I was immediately sold. And not only that, she's entering her 15th year with Catholic Charities. So I was completely sold with her, uh, with her desire to just be committed mm -hmm. to the mission of Catholic Charities. So it gives me great pleasure this evening to welcome our executive director, Lisa Perkins. Welcome to the Catholic Charities Toast to the Gala. We are honored that you have joined us for our evening to celebrate the mission of Catholic Charities. The Catholic Charities Gala was formed 10 years ago by a dedicated group of friends and supporters of Catholic Charities. Since the gala's inception, Catholic Charities has served over 275,000 individuals. We've responded to many natural disasters, have worked tirelessly to disrupt food insecurity, and have implemented programming to prevent and address homelessness. We have advocated for the most vulnerable in our community. This past year has been exceptionally challenging for many of our neighbors, some who have had to come to Catholic Charities for the first time due to sudden and unexpected loss of employment. Your support of the gala is essential to Catholic Charities being able to meet the growing needs of our brothers and sisters. In closing, on behalf of the families that we serve, and as the Executive Director of Catholic Charities, I would like to thank the staff, volunteers, and donors of Catholic Charities. You have been compassionate, inspiring, and generous. You allow us to be a light during dark times. Stay safe, well, and enjoy the evening. We grew out of a necessity that was recognized that there was a 1.5 million pound food shortage between Durham and Orange Counties. The food pantry program is great, and especially thanks to Catholic Charities, we received Food Lion gift cards that really came uh, at a great time. Those people cried because uh, they were able to finally uh, get some meat and uh, food that they needed for their families. We're very blessed to have the resources to be able to meet the demand that there is. It's, it's high in Durham. Um, we're helping upwards of 5,000 people a month. For someone to not say no, to just say yes and with a smile, and it just gives me joy to give back to the community. I visited some of the families to see how it did affect them in their homes. We were helping a, a variety of people at home to see really how it was so important. Oh gosh, your donations are wonderful. Please donate because, you know, I work in the vegetables every day and see the great stuff that you send. We really, really need all the donations that come in because there's so many people that when they see the boxes that we're putting in a the car, they love it. Just keep donating to this cause because there's so many people that need this. So just keep bringing it in and we'll keep sorting it out and we'll keep putting it out. COVID has caused a lot of our uh, pantry operations across the diocese to rethink and revamp everything, all of our functions. Of course, stressing uh, safety first. So we had to switch to a curbside model, which given Lakewood Shopping Plaza actually uh, works out for us in the end. What we do is we just um, load groceries directly into the trunk. There are former clients um, who once they've been able to get back on track, have returned as volunteers. The people that you meet, the volunteers, the directors, and then the community that come for food and stuff, it's really the good to see them smile and say thank you, thank you, thank you. It is, It touches your heart, because I was in their shoes one day, and I needed help, and I know how they feel. I've come a long way. Even as a teacher, we don't make that much, but trying to raise my daughter, it was tough with one salary. I went without so she could have and have a normal life because it's about the kids and you see them in the car and it's gotta touch your heart. 
You know, I drive down the road and I'm like, God, you know, what a day. We, I think we served like a hundred and some kid families today. And you hate to have that stop off time, sure. but um, it makes you feel good. Over 40 volunteers just to have today in, three, in a four hour period. We help all who come to us. Um, we don't have eligibility limitations. Um, if someone comes and, and asks for help, then uh, we provide that. And I think that makes us unique also. So we just give them comfort, we give them hope, let them know that no matter what the circumstances, we're here for them. Providing help, creating hope, and serving all. And right there is why your generosity is so important tonight. You know, Katie, over the last year or so, WRL, we've done so many stories of the great need that families are experiencing yeah. because of the pandemic, and many of them relying on the pantries that Catholic charities mm -hmm. provide. I know, Ken, it's, it's true. And speaking of the Durham Community Fan pantry there has been no bigger champion than duke university's head football coach david cutcliffe and you know ken i will never ever forget one of my first big meetings after coming to the diocese seven years ago was with coach cut at wallace wade stadium and we had a great meeting but i walked away realizing that the passion he has for the work of catholic charities is amazing. It absolutely blew me away. And since then, Coach has been a constant supporter of Catholic Charities, specifically with the Durham Community Food Pantry. And he has been a phenomenal ambassador for the pantry in the community, constantly sharing his inspirational messages of servant leadership and sending his big, strong football <laughs> players out to deliver food into our clients' cars. So we are absolutely honored to have Coach Cutcliffe joining us this evening from Durham to share a few words. Good evening, everyone, and uh, hello. And uh, as you might already know, the Catholic Charities Organization is one of my favorite organizations. And here in Durham, we have the Durham Community Food Pantry that our team is very involved with. And we were so excited when it opened. Uh, I've, I've been a part of Catholic Charities in some form all of my life. I've watched the great work that's been done. And the reason that we chose it as an organization for our team to be a part of is that you know that it's going to the right people. We have great trust and confidence in Catholic charities. The Durham Community Food Pantry has got great people, and you always choose people. So we hope you're having a great time this evening, even if it is virtual. God bless you all, and the very, very best to each one of you. And God bless you too, Coach Cut. We do appreciate your continued support of Catholic Charities. Ellen is back to tell us how you can support us financially tonight. Thank you, Ken. You can support the mission of Catholic Charities by making a direct donation. If you are watching us on a computer, you should be able to look to the right of the screen and see a donate button. If you are on a phone, just scroll down below this live stream and you will see a donate button. There is also an area to purchase raffle tickets. All right. We promised you some great entertainment. Uh, a year and a half ago when we were at Crabtree Marriott, this band provided some great music. It's a local band, and I know you're going to enjoy them tonight. Please welcome Push Play. Back for more. Boys, come along with our mom and do it. But ain't no 
lights, a can of coals, and mama, I'm sure I need the night has already gone. Bushplay had us moving in the studio. We were dancing. Out. This was great. And hopefully next year we'll get a chance to support that group in person. Yes, absolutely. Listen, you guys have continued to be very generous tonight. We want to get a first look at our tally tonight, Katie. Ooh, let's see. Can we see? Yes. Um, Woo! $154,364. Ken, can you believe it? That is great. And you know, Katie, when you look at the support we're getting tonight, how important is this support oh, to the success of Catholic Ken, Charities? Ken, I cannot tell you how important it is, how critical the support is tonight. Funds raised this evening are extremely important to the continuation of Catholic Charity Services. Each year, the generosity of the Bishop's Annual Appeal funds 25% of the agency's operating budget, leaving the additional 75% to be raised through generous donors like tonight's sponsors and those watching virtually right now. The staff at Catholic Charities rely so heavily on these contributions to ensure that they can continue to effectively serve our community with both dignity and love. All right. Yeah. So one of our core programs is Family Advancement Services that comprehensively supports the health of the family, whether that means mental health, financial health, or the overall well-being of the family. Take a look. There are more people reaching out for first-time assistance than ever before. We need help. They have lost their jobs. There would be a lot of people that will be homeless. And we know for sure that some people would be hungry. Income insecurity. That wouldn't have the heat on in the winter time. I may not be alive. The medicine is life-saving that I'm taking. We are getting upwards of more than a thousand calls a month for assistance. The numbers are just incredible. If you are human, we're here to help you. Everybody's treated with respect and dignity and with love, and I like that very much. So the Family Events Services um, is a program that encompasses uh, trying to address the individual as a whole. Our program uh, focuses on what are the needs that we can identify. I work as a clinical mental health counselor and I work as the support of the family specialist. Support for the family could be anywhere from trying to find someone a place to live, uh, clothing or connect them with another nonprofit organization so they can find their way around the system. As parent educator, I teach a program, um, it's called Language is the Key. It's a dialogic reading program, uh, a 10 week program, one day a week for one hour. Families uh, with children zero to five enrolled in the program. Uh, before COVID, we were meeting at churches or public libraries, community centers, and because of COVID, we have to reinvent and, and adapt. So we are doing the classes through Zoom. ¿Te gustan las clases? Sí. ¿Qué te gusta más? Las clases. Las clases, dice. Due to COVID, we are giving uh, assistance to individuals to help with their rent and their utility bills because of being out of work, uh, businesses closing down. They could have had COVID and not been able to work. 
as a senior trying to survive in Eastern North Carolina has been a kind of hard thing for me and my family. Sí nos da muchísima muchísima comida. Ayuda mucho porque como le digo los ingresos tampoco de hoy en día no no son muchos como antes. Me ayudan con pampers para los niños, con toallas, toallitas húmedas. We were living on fixed income, which is not a lot of money. Uh, my wife's a retired school teacher. The Catholic charities here help cut our gas on. If you need help with your rent and help with your utilities, this is the place to come to. If you need help finding a job, this is the place to come to. If you need help writing a resume, this is the place to come to. We do a lot more things than just financial assistance. So it's a one-stop shop, as they call it. You know, you don't need to go to five different places. With the medical, the pharmaceuticals, Catholic Charities also help in that area. Not only that, every year they give us a, a food voucher. People who have these chronic illnesses a lot of times have to make decisions uh, because of their low income. They have to make decisions between whether I put food on the table, pay my bills, or get my medication. And those are the people that we try to give the most assistance to. Medication prices don't care about your income. They don't care if your income goes up or goes down. Their, their prices go up though. I think our biggest impact is restoring hope in families. I could tell you about numbers, I could tell you about you know how many people we reach, but I think the biggest impact is that those numbers are actually human beings being impacted and their lives being restored and people crying to say thank you because when I came to this place I found hope. We are a place where people trust. People feel welcome. People feel that they don't get judged. The people at Catholic Charities love people. It's been of a big, big benefit to us uh, economically and also psychologically and spiritually to let you know that there are still some people on this planet that love the Lord. I absolutely love the job I do. The families that I serve and the people I work with. Catholic Charities is family to me. From a, a biblical perspective of saying, to feed the hungry, to um, shelter the homeless, to uh, clothe the naked, um, all those actions. To be able to continue, we need everybody's help. We here at Catholic Charities see firsthand what that money is doing. People are eating. People are able to stay in their homes versus sleeping in their cars, especially with little kids. We are a nonprofit organization and we're here to serve anybody regardless of their race, their origin, their ethnicity, their religion. Anybody can come to us. We're going to do our best to serve everybody. It's been a fantastic voyage. Que Diosito los bendiga y que les sigan ayudando los demás. Providing help, creating hope, and serving all. And that is what we do. Boom. <laughs> Boom, he said it right there. And, and you just heard why your generosity is so important to us tonight. No donation is too small, no donation is too big. If you got some deep pockets, we'll take it. And as Katie said earlier, uh, you, all the funds raised tonight will be going directly to client services. But Ellen is back now, and you got something to talk about the raffle. Well, Ken, I'm curious, mm -hmm. if you won the first prize in the raffle, hmm. would you pick Alaska or Kiowa Island? You know what? I've always wanted to visit Alaska, so I think I would go with Alaska because, you know, I've always seen all the pictures and the glaciers and the scenic beauty of Alaska, so I definitely would like to see that in person. Well, Alaska is also on my bucket list. So if you've been thinking about purchasing a raffle ticket, now is the time. We need to cut off our raffle ticket sales to get your names into our raffle drum. Please enjoy another performance from Push Play. We'll see you on the other side.
those guys oh, they're amazing i oh love them God. i miss them in person oh i know and hopefully <laughs> next year we'll all be back together celebrating catholic charities 2022 yeah. speaking of which you guys are doing great tonight our tally is going up let's see where we are right now Woo! One thousand one hundred and fifty-six thousand six hundred and fourteen dollars. This is that great. Is huge. I love seeing that, that number huge. go up. <laughs> you know, a lot of people might be sitting there, Katie, wondering, well, I'm giving all this money. How is it being used? Oh, my gosh. This money is so critical, Ken. And as I shared earlier, funds raised tonight will go directly towards client services. You know, a $40 donation could provide a family of four with a week's worth of nutritious groceries. A $100 donation could provide supplies to help volunteers repair a home damaged by a natural disaster. And a $500 donation could greatly assist a family transitioning from homelessness into stable housing. And by making a contribution tonight, you will be directly and positively impacting the lives of your neighbors in need. You know, Katie, I completely understand what how important these contributions are because when my parents moved our family from the British Virgin Islands yes. to the U.S. Virgin Islands, we were immigrants mm -hmm. and we had very little and I remember distinctly never going hungry and having talked to my mom over the years, she says a lot of it has to do with the fact that we relied on food pantries similar yes. to the ones that Catholic Charities provide. So we understand the need. Yeah, of course. And you know, I just shared how a $100 donation could help volunteers rebuild a home destroyed by disease disasters. In fact, Catholic Charities is still helping families who were devastated by Hurricane Matthew in 2016. So I am thrilled for this video to share more about our disaster services program and how we are making an impact. We knocked on a door and uh, behind the door we found a gentleman who um, was a double amputee and he had fallen out of his chair probably two days before we were able to get to him. I picture his house and I picture him. It was one of those moments that you're like, what would have happened if we didn't have the hunch to knock on this door, if we didn't come down this one street? Because we can't be everywhere, but we happened to be there. It was almost like divine intervention. Yeah, it was a very touching day. That's why we do what we do, and that's why we're the tent that doesn't pack up. Catholic Charities has been an incredible partner for us. Housing and home security are one of our most basic needs. They've been a key in finding out what a family's needs are, what other resources we can help pull together around that family, whatever it takes to bring someone from crisis to stability. I think that it's the most necessary work and the most fulfilling work. Community-led. It's a lot easier for a neighbor to know what your needs are than to wait on an agency, hopefully, to get to you. It really is up to the local community in the end to take care of their own neighbors, and that's what we pride ourselves in, is being you know, the last tent here, the last agencies standing to make sure that all of our neighbors recover. We have three main programs out of this office, uh, immigration services, emergency assistance program, which includes our food pantry, and then we have our disaster services program. The United Way organizes local volunteers and donors to assess both the gaps and the resources in, in any community and customize the solutions to that community. In this community, uh, one of those solutions we turn to quite often 
is Catholic Charities. We try to serve families impacted by any disaster in all phases of a disaster. So in the response phase, we might run uh, points of distribution to get life-sustaining supplies out to communities um, as they start their recovery process. Once we get into the recovery process, we help families rebuild. The impact that Catholic Charities has had on the community is not only helping people recover and also being there on the front lines immediately after the storm, but also in preparing for the future. How do we make sure that this doesn't happen again, and that people are not in the same situation year after year or disaster after disaster? We really strive to work with families to help them better prepare their families, their communities, and their neighborhoods because we know that it's not if there's going to be a disaster, it's a matter of when. Disaster preparedness expos have been going on now for three years. Bringing all agencies together to bring in their piece of the recovery. Um, and we've seen that this year, in the last two years, with hurricanes, tornadoes, environmental disasters, and with COVID, that it's really, really crucial that we prepare our communities so that we all make it out a little bit safer and we make it out alive. As a disaster case manager, it's mainly about um, really listening to your client and to all of their needs. Um, and then taking in all of that information and advocating for them to other organizations that might have the resources to assist them. One of the greatest things about the case management system that Catholic Charities has is it, it starts local. Um, I've definitely seen large investments in um, statewide solutions fail because they were hiring from outside or trying to case manage from um, far away from the community when the individuals didn't know the community. You won't get that with Catholic Charities. They've already got someone that's fully trusted by the community, that understands the community, and is able to connect immediately and never stops and lets go until the job's done. We've been working with this woman who's uh, elderly. She is living in a family home where she grew up in. Uh, we went to go visit her a couple of weeks ago and we noticed that her foundation was completely cracked. I walked into her bedroom and I noticed that the ceiling was caving in right over where her head is at night when she sleeps. And that was when I was like, you know what, this is why we're the tent that doesn't pack up. Everybody, you know, eventually the media crews are gone, the cameras are gone, it's out of the news. People forget that, you know, these disasters take years to recover from. But this is why our mission is to provide help, but also provide hope for these families who have been in it for so many years and are still waiting to be rebuilt. Long-term recovery people don't realize can take up to a decade. They've been an incredible partner in helping speed up recovery, increase the quality of recovery for all of our, our citizens and survivors. Still being here, still being in the community um, and being ever-present and you guys have really become a trusted voice and a trusted resource in the community. Time, treasure, and talent are always welcomed. If you can swing a hammer, you can paint something. We always have opportunities for people to give back to their community and be the hands and the feet. Sometimes even more valuable than money is people's time. Get to know your Catholic Charities team um, and find out what their specific needs are. I know I can trust Catholic Charities, not just to help someone back to recovery, but to do it where they have dignity and compassion along the way. Providing help, creating hope, serving all. It's who we are to our core. It's what we do every single day. And that's why we're here to stay. Oh boy, I can tell you, uh, having covered a number of disasters here in our community mm -hmm. in Down East, uh, I can tell you every time we're covering some disaster somewhere, it's always gratifying to see volunteers with Catholic Charities out there helping people rebuild their lives. And your Catholic Charities always looking for opportunities to help our neighbors. Mm -hmm. And you you got a program you want to tell us about at St. Michael's Parish. I do. I'm so glad that you asked me about this. It's such a cool collaboration between St. Michael the Archangel Parish in Cary and Catholic Charities. Mm. We are now expanding with the help of St. Michael's, our bilingual services out to Cary, North Carolina. And this um, program is really modeled off of the successful program, Centro Para Familias Hispanas in Raleigh, mm. where we will really be helping the local Hispanic community in the Cary area right there at their very own parish and 
it's just such a great collaboration with the parishioners at St. Michael's. We're so excited for it. Again, the reason your generosity is so important for us tonight. So we've come to that moment, but yes. you know, I said earlier with, with our raffle prizes, I would like to go to Alaska. What about you? Oh my gosh, this is such a tough call. <laughs> and I know both you and Ellen said Alaska, and I, right. I think that would be wonderful, but I'm gonna go Kiowa. Really? I am, and I think, okay, this is why. I, I have a lot of family up north. We haven't gotten to see each other. I hope you're all watching right now That's buying right. raffle tickets <laughs> because I'm I'm counting on one of you to win this Kiowa trip so that we can all get together and stay in one of those awesome Kiowa Island townhomes wow. um, at the resort. So that's kind of my wish. <laughs> all right. I love it. <laughs> Not right. for the moment. I know. It's the big moment that we've all been waiting for. I know we've been hyping it up all night, all week, and we're going to ask our lovely gala chair, Ellen Crawley, to pull our three raffle winners for tonight and finally find out who is going to be taking home these amazing prizes. Thank you, Ken and Katie. So here we go. Virtual drum roll. Yeah. And the winner of the choice of a trip to Alaska or Kiowa Island is Peter Von Jess. Congratulations, Peter. The winner of the Angus Barn Wine Cellar Dinner for 12 is Don McGuire. Congratulations, Don. And the winner of the Taste of the Triangle Gift Basket is Gina Hawkins. Congratulations, Gina. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Job. Congratulations to all the winners. Congratulations, Congratulations. to another successful night. A toast to the gala. Absolutely. Uh, you didn't win this year, but just take heart in knowing that all your contributions tonight will contribute to the success of Catholic Charities. And speaking of which, let's see that final do we have tally a final tonight. Number? Let's see it. What is it? Ken, do the honors. Ken, do the honors. $156,839. Wow. Thanks to you. Thanks to oh everyone. My gosh. Cheers. Cheers. For a very successful Catholic Charities oh, Gala. It was, oh my gosh, what a fun <laughs> night. And I know I can speak for Ken, Ellen, and myself when I say that we are beyond grateful that you joined us for the virtual toast to the gala this evening. And we look forward to seeing you in person yes. next year on Saturday, April 30th, Mark 2022, <laughs> for our next gala. And, you know, I have to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for helping Catholic Charities provide help, create hope, and serve all throughout our communities. Please stay safe, healthy, and have a wonderful weekend. Good night. Call me the space cowboy. Yeah, some call me Barcelona. Some people call me Morisa. As I speak, I'm a People talk about me, baby. Doing you wrong, doing you wrong. But don't you worry, baby, no, don't worry, mama. Cause I'm right here at home. Cause I'm a figure, I'm a planner, I'm a lover, and I'm a sinner. I play my music in the sun. I'm a joker. I'm a smoker, I'm a midnight smoker. I sure don't wanna hurt no one. I'm a grinner, I'm a 
Share 